Welcome back and now in the thick of the festival season, I'm catching up with Vice President for Marketing Mondelez India, Nitin Saini. We are catching up with him on their new campaign, Shining Spotlight on Homepreneurs. Around the festival, key trends witnessed by the brand from Rakhi to Diwali and how are Indians consuming chocolate and how is the brand set for premiumization, their strategy in this direction and much more. So around this Diwali, first up, you have launched Ghar Ki Dukaan, shining spotlight on homepreneurs this time. Uh, tell us more about the thought behind, you know, this campaign. Yeah, Shivani, if you look at uh, our uh, Diwali work in the last three years, they've been all been around the theme of helping small businesses. So if you look at uh, 2020 and 2021, it was helping small retailers who were coming on the back of a tough COVID situation. Correct. And then last year, it was helping those who don't even have a shop, which is shop for shopless. Mm. So this year, we are shining spotlight on homepreneurs. Uh, these are small home businesses who do a lot of fantastic work. They are mostly owned by women uh, who do it for their pride, to give outlet to their passion and also to contribute to the household income. Uh, but they are very limited in their reach. Uh, mm. So with our campaign, which is uh, this ad is my store, uh, we are enabling these homepreneurs to increase their reach and go beyond their own neighborhood to the whole city. Yeah. So that's really the idea of our campaign this year. And it was launched around Navratri time. And from Navratri to, let's say, Diwali is like crucial time for a company like uh, Mondelez. And over the past uh, couple of years, we have seen a lot of action from uh, Mondelez brands. Uh, tell us what else is cooking around, uh, you know, this festival. We have two more campaigns right now live on air, which is uh, around the theme of the World Cup. So we have a campaign on dairy milk, which is called Sit Together. Mm. Uh, and this, that is all about inspiring uh, people to celebrate the spirit of cricket together mm. uh, by watching it together, irrespective of the background or the jobs they do. Uh, that campaign is also live on air. Uh, we also have a campaign from Oreo, which is called Oreo Bola Mat Bol, mm. which is a playful twist uh, to a, an old belief that, you know, we shouldn't talk about India winning the World Cup just yet till India wins the World Cup. So we have Oreo doing this and we have Dairy Milk on sit together and we have the celebrations campaign about uh, helping the homepreneurs which is live on air right now. Sure. And, uh, you know, from Rakhi, where, uh, you know, you launched your first uh, leg of the festive uh, campaigns uh, to, let's say, uh, Diwali. I mean, almost uh, stepping into, uh, you know, the Diwali fever right now. Uh, can you tell us uh, what are some of the key consumer trends that you are noticing? I would say that uh, certainly we are seeing, uh, uh, you know, a lot of positive sentiment as far as consumers are concerned, as, you know, we can see on our own performance during Rakhi and Diwali. So, I mean, Diwali is still early days, you know, the, some of the early indicators are positive, but you know, hoping for uh, a good Diwali. So, there's certainly a strong consumer sentiment uh, getting into the festive season. Yeah. Uh, the other trend, I would say, is certainly around premiumization. We are seeing an increasing trend of premiumization. There is this consumer cohort, which is looking for more premium, more sophisticated experiences. Yeah. Uh, and actually, we at Mondelez are well set up to tap into that premiumization trend. But I would say that's another definitely a trend that we are seeing in the market. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned well uh, set up for the premiumization uh, trend. What are some of the things that you've already done and what are some of the things that we expect uh, from Mondelez uh, in that direction? If you look at our portfolio, if you look mm -hmm. at our chocolate portfolio, we have a very strong portfolio when it comes to premium chocolate. We have got silk, uh, we have got Boneville, which is all about building relevance for dark chocolate in India. Uh, and actually, Mondelez India has led the premiumization agenda for chocolates in this yeah. country. So very well set up on the chocolate side. And if I look at biscuits, uh, premiumizing the categories are, uh, you know, is the growth opportunity that we look at. Yeah. Uh, and we again have a very strong portfolio there with Oreo, which is doing extremely well. And then we have a strong second pillar now as well in Choco Bakes. So yeah. I would say if I look at our portfolio, uh, we are well set up to tap into the premiumization trend. As a market leader, Nitin, if you can share uh, with us, how is India eating chocolate today over the past uh, one year? Uh, uh, if you can throw in some uh, light and how much of chocolate has been consumed over the past one year? I would say that, uh, you know, certainly the category is doing well. Hmm. And we as, uh, you know, as market leaders, definitely one of our key objective is to drive category growth. Hmm. Uh, and there are several things that we look at when it comes to driving category growth. There's definitely an opportunity to drive penetration. Hmm. But there's still an, a lot of households who do not consume chocolate. 
more so in rural than urban and that is where our low unit price portfolio really comes into play. So mm. we have again a very strong portfolio there in 5 rupee and 10 rupee that plays a role over there. Mm. Uh, once somebody is in the, uh, in, in one starts consuming chocolate, we have again have a, a very strong portfolio to drive more occasions of consumption. Mm. Whether that be, you know, home stocking or stocking of chocolate or home at home or gifting, which is where our celebration brand comes into play. The, the third lever I would say is uh, what I just spoke about, which is premiumization. Mm. And that is again a trend that one is seeing when it comes to chocolate category that there is uh, this uh, desire to have more premium sophisticated experiences. So for us, all three levers are important uh, to drive penetration. Penetration in rural more, and uh, markets that are not consuming so much chocolate. Absolutely. More occasions of consumption yeah. such as gifting, mm. uh, stocking chocolate at home. And then finally, premiumization, which is to have mm. more premium sophisticated experiences. And all of it goes into driving the category growth, which I think uh, is the big opportunity for us. Because when one compare India with some of the other markets in the world, we still have a, a huge headroom to grow when it comes to per capita consumption. Mm. And when it comes to consumer cohort, which uh, uh, consumer cohort uh, uh, are you looking at, which you think is both exciting and challenging? For the company, I think I would say the the one that I just spoke about, which is you know people who are looking for both premium, sophisticated huh. experience, the aspirant, aspirant consumer cohort, if you yeah. like, you know, because they there's there's certainly a, a huge opportunity to grow with mm. that consumer cohort, but at the same time they do look for more indulgent, more premium, more sophisticated experience. So you got to make sure that what you're putting out in front of them is absolutely of you know gold standard quality. Yeah. Uh, so I would say it's uh, that's the consumer cohort uh, and more exciting than challenging. Yeah. And what about the Gen Z's? Because, you know, every brand and FMCG player is speaking about tapping, uh, you know, into the Gen Z's. And, you know, that's that's a very discerning uh, uh, consumer uh, to reach. Uh, so how, how are you engaging with uh, the Gen Z consumers? I think Gen Z is uh, absolutely a very important cohort when it comes to our consumer base. Mm. Uh, and uh, we talk to them in different ways. So of course, you know, when we communicate, our messaging is uh, a lot of times, you know, is tuned to what their preferences are, what their passion points are. Uh, we also have a strong uh, personalization mm. uh, program when it comes to reaching out to consumers. So then we have a dedicated set of communication that goes with these people, mm. that goes to Gen Z. Uh, a lot of what we do around activation, Shubani, a lot of story doing, mm. uh, you know, a lot of uh, not just... Uh, communicating our proposition, but also enabling people, hmm. uh, you know, is also something that connects with Gen Z very well, because hmm. they really like it when the brands are not just talking about their proposition, but are also living it. Hmm. So I think these are the different ways in which we are able to connect uh, well with Gen Z and we actually have a very strong emotional connection with them. Yeah, now overall when it comes to media strategy, Nitin, uh, we, we spoke about, uh, you know, reaching out uh, to the rural uh, consumer to drive penetration in some of those markets. We spoke about premiumization, Gen Z's. But when it comes to media strategy and media bifurcation, uh, what are the mediums that you are using? How are you using digital? How are you using uh, TV? If you can uh, throw in some light or strategy, uh, you know, or your thought process behind uh, using different mediums. Well, absolutely. In the end, it, it also depends upon what that campaign objective is. But if I look at for most of our campaigns, TV and digital are certainly a part of the media mix hmm. and both are important parts of the media mix. And then depending upon a specific objective, uh, we also include other mediums such as uh, print and out of home. So they also get part, become a part of the mix. But TV and digital, they are definitely the two main medium by which we communicate. And what are your expectations going forward? We are towards the end of uh, 2023. Going forward uh, in 2024, what are your expectations from the year? And what are some of the targets and goals that you've set for yourself and Mondelez in India? We are coming to the end of the year and also to the end of my first year yes. uh, at Mondelez India. But when I look back, uh, I feel very satisfied. I think the team at Mondelez India uh, marketing has done a fantastic job. A lot of good campaigns to talk about. We spoke about a few the one that I really like is the birthday campaign uh, that we uh, did in July, which was about building relevance of celebrations in the birthday occasion. Uh, and that we, uh, you know, people could make their own personalized birthday songs yeah. and gift it. Uh, so, you know, that's done fantastically well for us. More than 800,000 songs created. Mm. The business performance has been very good. So, as we, uh, you know, as we come to the end of 2023, I feel... Uh, 
uh, very satisfied and proud of what the team has done. Uh, and then 24 obviously is a new challenge and we've got to make sure that uh, we continue to raise the bar, do even better work, continue to grow the business, but also do work that is, uh, uh, you know, that cuts through, uh, that cuts through with the consumers yeah. in India. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today and all the best for that. Thank you. With that, it's a wrap on Storyboard this week. You can catch all of our content on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Thanks for watching. We will be back same time next week. See you soon.